everybody and welcome to what is effectively the last FIFA National Committee meeting of the uh, of Decent Galleries of Peace Authority anyway. Um, but I think we'll just press on with business first. So if we just get Nate away, head her in the front. Thank you, convener. I've got no apologies for And do we have any declarations of interest? Okay, um, item three is the minute of the meeting of 10th of January. Are we happy to approve this or are there any comments? Okay. And item four is the meeting, uh, sorry, the minute of the meeting of the 31st of January. Are we happy to approve those minutes? On to item five then. Uh, that's the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, the Peace and Gallery, local plan, and the other reports. Uh, sorry, action deputy chief fire officer. Thanks, Chair. Uh, members, I don't really intend to go into this in any detail, uh, mainly because you've seen this so many times in so many different venues. Uh, just to say that all of the consultation has now been completed and there were no negative responses at all. Uh, what we've done is just tidied it up a little bit, added some photographs to it, and it's presented to you today to agree both the plan and the action plan that uh, is attached to it as well. And the second part is obviously that we then recommend that the local fire and rescue plan and action plan uh, be taken to Fuller Council for approval. I'm happy to take any questions from members. Any questions from members? Are we happy then to go to the recommendations, um, agree the contents, and recommend it to Fuller Council? Item six is the local policing plan. Um, again, we're being asked to consider and approve uh, the plan and its contents. Um, also note <coughs> the role of the Council of Peace Authority in scrutinizing city performance and how that will be um, reported and monitored. And also be assured the plan provides for robust scrutiny of local policing performance and also to agree to recommend the plan to full council for implementation by 1st of October. Um, would you like to speak? very similar to uh, Hamish's report. We've uh, taken us through uh, various consultations now and uh, that's really come to an end. There has been some very minor amendments, mainly to make some of the links to the Dumfries and Galloway Council and SOA sites slightly more explicit and really that's the only changes. Uh, and again, I would ask it to recommend it approved to full council next week for approval. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Ogilvy. Apologies about the technical hitch there, Chair. Uh, just a, a simple question. In, in the previous report there, um, if you look at 2.2, .2, it says note that the Council as a peace authority and scrutinising. Is there not a similar thing for fire? Just asking the question. Why wasn't that in that as part of that? Yeah, I mean, I suspect there's, you can't just copy and paste everything, I guess. Uh, I don't know if there's a, an answer in anybody's mind. De Derek, would you be able to help with that? No. Can't answer that just now, Ronnie, but I can certainly try and find out for you. On you go. It's simply that, you know, we don't talk to each other about what we put in in terms of recommendations. And probably uh, all that's happened here is the individual previous unit has thought that was the best way in which to present it. That's, that's purely that it's just about a presenting uh, method rather than it being the actual content of the, the recommendation. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 I totally accept that. However, this is recognising that there's, there's a future for scrutiny and that. I take it as a given that, that the fire would be the same. Just a mute comment. No, no, absolutely. But I, th I think to be fair, they, they've come on to that with the Just a wee question that was just, just in the content of the chief plan itself. Um, 
It identifies that there should be seven lead contacts for each priority. Uh, I think it's on page seven or eight. Um, and it, it's just to check, uh, really, is that just a continuation of, of officers as it, as it is now, but within the new structure, or is that the only way that can change it? It's really a continuation of the officers that are already in place, so it just moves forward uh, at the level of the Principal's Gallery, it's not a national gallery. Um, any further questions? In that case, are we happy to go to the recommendations? Please. Item seven is the review of the schemes of delegation, uh, where we've been looked uh, asked to look at the decision-making arrangements going forward um, after the 1st of April. Um, I think if uh, Derek, if you'd like to speak to that. Thanks very much, Convener, <coughs> Mr. Lead Members. The purpose of this report is hopefully to ensure that uh, members of uh, this committee are assured that, in fact, we put in place robust arrangements in terms of council uh, goals. In fact, we're looking at longer term, given the details So the recommendations are set out by the four members, uh, and on that basis, I'm really happy to take any questions to yourselves this evening. Councillor Ogilvy. Yeah, I'm really pleased with uh, these. Um, I've talked to, I've said it here, I've said it at the Pathfinder, and I've talked to officers, I've talked to my own group about this, uh, those that sit on the, the officers working, I mean, the working group for uh, senior delegation, and this is exactly what they say do this interim thing and then look at the wider picture going forward. So I'm, I'm very pleased to, uh, well, I'm happy to recommend this to three councils, personally. Um, there was a couple of really minor questions. Uh, <coughs> one was to do with <coughs> recommendation 3.1, um, the membership of 11 based on proportionality. I noticed also that there's a, uh, a respect given to the geographical spread of members as well. Um, I don't know if that should be stated in the recommendation or if that's just a scheme to make clear. Thank you, Convener. I think the intention is clearly is, uh, for the full council to agree the, the size of the committee we're recommending at 11. It's also uh, for the committee, sorry, ultimately to agree on proportionality. And on that basis, we can't uh, instruct there to be a geographical spread, but uh, a clear uh, inference is that that would be desirable. Given the current makeup of this committee, that seems to provide that geographical spread. And the logical place to go is to continue with these principles. And as the report says, we want to mirror the work of this committee as much as possible in terms of governing the whole of the report. Another small question. Uh, just in terms of the, obviously, there's the intention to have a, a meeting of the, whatever the new structure is in April, at the earliest opportunity. Uh, with the new longer-term arrangements to be agreed by the refit, so does that mean there'd effectively only need to be two meetings at a maximum of the new interim structure? I mean, the intention would be to, as I said, ensure there's a minimum uh, number of meetings on a quarterly basis. It could be more than that, but it's not the nature of business. It's not the views of members. In the short term, the intention is to certainly have a meeting April, as I've indicated, and then from that, following the full council's decision, uh, therefore, uh, I suggest that in the first instance we let the, the subcommittee actually do their work, and we'll then determine the way forward. So I wouldn't want to prejudge the decision of the subcommittee, uh, and therefore suggest that the key thing is that the structure that's agreed, the recommendation we can make today, uh, does meet in April. Council Rogovi. That, that, that's fine. Um, if the officer working group then determine that uh, community safety has a bigger role, then there might be a re need to have more frequent meetings, say bi monthly rather than quarterly. That'll come out, that'll be a recommendation to the full council. So it uh, depends how that committee then, I mean, it's either quarterly or, or bi monthly, one would assume. Hopefully, it's bi monthly and we have a bigger room at the end of the day. That's my wish, anyway. Uh, Councillor Nicholl. 
<coughs> back of what Councillor Rowe just said, I think there is a feeling that the two months of every two months would be some members of the Shield Shield Council rather than quarterly because I think the feel is <coughs> two monthly would give a better overview of what's happening and I think it needs to be discussed at some stage. Yeah, just to ask if there's been any movement on the subcommittee pushing on the extension. Just uh, to better my knowledge, I think it's something that was discussed with the member from the Shield Council before. I'm not sure if there's been any movement on that. In the past, it's been good practice, and I think I recognise it's good practice. I don't know if anyone else has any questions. Just to mention the two familiar with the legislation conveners, the first one is the Health and Safety Commission, the second one is the Health and Safety Commission. And we're discussing the health and safety commission as well. Councillor Stein first. Uh, just a wee bit, uh, it mentions a, a couple of times in here about partnership working and in principle five, it, it, it mentions partnership working uh, <coughs> during, during the, uh, the, the Pathfinder uh, group being in existence. I thought we had a very, very poor response from partners. Uh, they didn't really attend the meetings. And uh, what partners do we want to engage with? There is a lot of, there, there's RSLs, there's child protection, different things. We, we had one representative for who were actually one of our partners at the meeting last week and all the way through the process there wasn't a great response. Can we ensure that within this that these partners are involved and how do we get them involved? Because I think it is the feeling of the rest of the group there's a very real response for community partners uh, through the whole process. Stein makes a very good point and one that's certainly endorsed clearly is that Deacon Galilee is keen to ensure we embrace principle of partnership working. Uh, I think uh, subject to full council deliberations next week, uh, there is certainly the opportunity uh, if it does in fact establish a subcommittee to ensure that the, that subcommittee is a work programme and that work programme could clearly uh, be very much driven by uh, a future range of activities Includes partners being invited along on particular themes and the members determine if being significant. As you've mentioned, uh, RSL very clearly that would be something that the members could influence and as part of the work programme that would be going to be certainly Just to go back to the um Complaints against the police. I just wonder what was happening nationally. Or, or, I mean, the two police officers here. I don't know if somebody put down a pathfinder nationally because it, there's a void there. We don't know what's happening. Uh, Councillor Blake has mentioned. Uh, I understand that uh, you will get reports on the complaints against the police. Now, I don't know to what degree that is compared to you know, what you had previously. So I'm, I'm slightly unsighted on that. I'll, uh, I'll certainly work uh, with Derek to, to get an answer to as soon as. But Certainly there's a plan that uh, a report would be submitted uh, to yourselves for discussion and I think there's a, a, a six monthly report on complaints against the police at a local level within the municipality. I would understand that that, that will be much the same as what performance was before the new legislation was passed. I think there's a deeper involvement of the subcommittee during the actual execution of A bit early because we don't know how the what the legislation says in that respect, but it, it's one that I wouldn't have included as a recommendation to the council to consider. But I would consider the possibility of having a further discussion with the council. Here we go. Uh, at uh, policy and resources, the, there was a one of the items was the Scottish government merging two um, bodies into one. The commissioner for uh, Ethical standards. I don't know if that maybe I'm off on my limb here, but I don't know if that's going to take in 
complaints against the police are, are totally separate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With that, then, I'd be happy to go with the recommendations with the additions. Um. Thank you. I've just written down the recommendations for the eighth session, then, and I'm pleased to be able to take on board in consideration of the role of complaints against the police as the recommendations for the eighth session. I will take that on board. I, I think that's, that's the issue for us. I, th I think it's to be able to sort of incite them to an understanding of legislation that's not specific. They do have a role, but I think it's silent in those terms. Uh, but it's, I think it's something that we can work on to address and try and get them to agree. I'll make sure that's reflected in the recommendation. Uh, Councillor Sellers. Uh, I want to have a bit relevant, Chair, to put 2.1 with partners where appropriate. I think what we're trying to work out is that, I mean, as being alluded to earlier, it's really for the airport subcommittee to determine what happens. So, although we can recommend that, it's really for the airport subcommittee to come in with. Thank you, Convener. Just a member of clarity. I think what we're clear about in 2 1 is the subcommittee goes with the members of the subcommittee, and therefore we're clear about the complaints against the police and members of the subcommittee and the work programme illustrated the work programme and recommended there was an engagement with the partners and the partners here to try and do that in terms of members of the subcommittee here and the work programme there and there was a decision made that we don't want to have any confusion by them. So that was primarily the thinking behind the way for that. And no, no difficulty if members are minded to, to include acknowledging the emphasis on continued partners and work approaches and what that might mean in terms of members here. Just to say that I think uh, Councillor Sam with regard to partnership work, and that's covered in 2.5. Thank you. It was just to say that uh, Councillor Griffith got on board with Pathfinder and agreed that we did have partners and we had a, a member of the uh, Pathfinder group, albeit the Pathfinder group was partners but not voting as a member. But I don't know whether that's the case. I hear what everybody's saying. Um, Two point one is slightly different. I mean, Two point as a subcommittee, we're, gonna, we're, we're making recommendations to full council. Now, if if we're just making the, the two point one fine, and then on the day at full council we can, uh, you know, say uh, well, hopefully, because we have to tell the other groups what we're thinking. You know, we can do it in either through here through recommendations, or, or if you see Derek chair, we can be allowed to raise that on full council day to say that this would be the. The, the course of travel that we'd like to see. I mean, I'm quite happy with either way, uh, as long as we get a chance to uh, flag that up to the ad hoc subcommittee or the member of the working group. That would be fine. More than comfortable that uh, the report will be shared with the convenience of South Shore Council next week. It will include the spirit of the discussion of today, but also very much so uh, the work of the ad hoc subcommittee of South Shore Council and members of the subcommittee, which is exclusively members, elected members. Certainly, we'll give them the work to try and ensure consideration of the report. Any further discussion? With that, and with the inclusions to the recommendations um, capturing the spirit of what we've debated today, are we happy to go with them? Yep. Great. Great. Item 8 is the Police Capital, uh, capital Programme. Monitoring for 2012-13 as of 28th of February.
Okay, uh, thanks very much. Uh, members will uh, note capital expenditures of uh, just over 1.6 million to 30th of December. That's against a total budget of just over 1.8 million of capital expenditure. The uh, progress in this respect has been very good. We've essentially done all the things we said we were going to do. Uh, major incident room is complete and working at, at uh, headquarters. It's been used very, very effectively for the Lockerbie inquiry. We've upgraded our cells provision at uh, Lorburn Street there. Uh, things are working very well. The contractors did an excellent job for us to rush it through and get it finished before uh, the Christmas New Year period. Um, so we really appreciate their, their efforts in that respect. Uh, they haven't been engaged by the council. Um, Castle Douglas site, um, that uh, work has uh, gone all to plan. Um, it came back on budget. Uh, we effectively had an open day about two, three weeks ago, I think, um, where we had over 400 members of the public come along. The um, station, in my opinion, and of course opinion, has been to, to use the previous facility uh, is first class. I think it's, it's very timely for us to got that completed the first of Feb. And it very much anchors that station in the eyes of the people of Lockerbie. So very grateful for the support that they uh, gave to us in, in that respect. Um, going through the uh, schedule for the, the uh, capital expenditure, it's uh, essentially showing everything is on track. It obviously has moved on a bit since the, the report. Um, there have been various other bits and pieces of work we've been able to do and get completed. Uh, so essentially it means that our, our whole um, estate is in a very, very good uh, state of repair for handover to the new police uh, service of Scotland, uh, in addition to which uh, equipment uh, to support officers uh, on the ground is uh, in the best state of repair it can be um, and is updated and we've done it with a little bit of advanced purchases to ensure that our officers are, are not disadvantaged. So it's overall a very good picture in relation to uh, what our plan was, what we've also been able to accelerate um, and the, the final balance of this uh, is. Any questions in this report? Councillor Ogilvy? Just an observation. Um, I personally would like to thank myself and your office for good put some pressures on there to get things up and run, you know, for this deadline and uh, to achieve that is uh, excellent. And I just wondered if Councillor Prentice attended the opening day at Castle Douglas. Must have been a, a real red flag day for him. Red flag? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Peacock. Thank you. Um, just again, um, I'm, I'm really pleased and delighted with the service for, for on this capital report. Um, as the Chief Constable has said, to bring up our estate into the, you know, up to a, a standard that is ready to be handed over and a very, very good standard indeed, as, as I think we have it right across from Precinct Galloway. Uh, and I'm, I'm pleased as well that he, he's um, kept to his budget very strictly and that is to be commended as well as, as introducing some other works that he's managed to find out with the savings from uh, other projects that he's done. So it's to be commended on that one very much. Um, just a, a quick point. With Castle Douglas and its station report, I know this goes back a bit. Have you actually got the BT and the IT system up set and working for you now? So there are some aspects of that still uh, to be complete, but there are also some of that to be completed. So uh, disappointment is one aspect of that. But as I say, it's, it's there to be an end uh, The officers will start uh, moving in on mass next week. Uh, the BT works finished. Uh, yesterday so that they're starting to move uh, stuff through now but officers were already working on that. Um, just a quick question on the um, Glen Ra. Uh, just wondering the <coughs> work completed in March, confirmation and final stuff and construction details for the Christmas New Year period. I understand they are because of the with the staff moving out to support the BT um, and uh, 
put a couple of Any further questions? For Councillor Mitchell. Can somebody tell me when we're about the livestock the two buffalo? Lower Burn <laughs> Lower Burn Street. Chair advised me it's uh, somebody with IT, so uh, it's server. So I presume they don't eat very much. Councillor Sain. Just my uh, usual kind of daft question. And, uh, looking at all the facilities that the police have got, a uh, wide range of facilities there. Uh, just on the visit we had to the fire facility a fortnight ago, will that be used, be, the, be able to be utilised by the police for some of their uh, training exercises, or do they still need to go externally for that? Because there is a facility that I think could be used for some of the, the police thing. I don't know if they're already there. And this is beyond my partners at working again, so. I can answer that question. The police already use the facility and have done for a number of years, particularly the firearms. And uh, that relationship, uh, I would suggest, will, will continue once we do both new services. Uh, that, that won't change at a local level. Yes, right. I'm sure we might be able to do something. <laughs> With that, and the uh, I'd like to take on board particularly Councillor Peacock's uh, endorsement and commitment of the, of the work to be carried out if this was put within budget and, uh, and deliver in time. Um, given sort of the uncertainty of the form, I think it's quite an achievement uh, and, and just a kudos to those involved with it. So if we're happy to go with the recommendation. Yep, thank you. <coughs> Item 9 is the Police Revenue Budget Monitoring 2012-13. Um, Wayne, perhaps? Yes, uh, the way the figures are looking at the moment, uh, we seem to be able to manage to deliver, will manage to deliver an spend of just around about 300,000 uh, for this year. Uh, that uh, is also taking account of uh, transferring 155,000 of the Shared Authority and the capital uh, budget. Um, so, overall, um, a very good and positive picture. Uh, we also have been able to um, purchase uh, new body armour, which was re requiring to be replaced, but slightly ahead of schedule. Um, and also, um, the new type of uh, jackets, which enables us to, to be able to supply the Scottish image across Scotland. So, uh, budget has been managed uh, very well in that respect. Um, and I think particularly our, our financial man manager, Mr. Taylor, um, has done a very good job for us by um, uh, a good and positive picture. Any questions? Councillor Ogilvy. Under 3 2, it's the future uh, budget items. Um, clearly states here that uh, you weren't asked to prepare a budget. Recognition will be, you know, fair enough thing. So that asks the question: What happens to the uh, underspend? I think I've asked this before. Lose it all, or is it, is it keep it? Or you know, what, once they've looked at your efficiency. Uh, no, uh, essentially, in terms of our reserves, which is in excess of the, the underspend, uh, we are caught between government and council. underspend uh, I think comes back to the council there's various there's various um, arguments that can be made for that but uh, I don't think the underspend is it's, it's yeah I mean I understood underspend was part of the, the, the kind of half a million and uh, Paul Garrett uh, the percentage that comes to the council uh, is going to be uh, put towards community safety initiatives within Galway and I believe that was approved at a, a previous uh, council meeting.
Councillor Cook. Yeah, just a, a comment really. Again, it, it's a very good report and the uh, Chief Constable and his staff to be commended again for bringing it in on an underspend on the revenue side of things. And perhaps actually as, uh, as a Dumfries and Galloway authority and with the local fire and police services that we have here, perhaps we should mention to the Scottish Government that it might be worthwhile if we actually took over the financial control of the new Scottish Police Authority, if we can produce budgets like this. Thank you for that. Um, any other? <coughs> I, 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 think, I don't think anyone could fail to endorse the, the good work done in terms of operating within a budget. I think it's a good philosophy for anyone. Um, Councillor Nicholls. Yeah, on, on the back of what uh, Councillor Peacock just said, I've always said that I had no problem with a single police force provided the police and Alex ran it because it's the best, the most efficient, best crime detection, etc. So I would totally back Councillor Peacock. I think if, if we can capture the, the spirit of this debate <laughs> in the minute, that, that would be very appropriate. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, with that then, are we happy to uh, go with the recommendations, 2.1 and 2.2? Item 10 is the police performance report, uh, and we've obviously been asked to scrutinise policing performance for the two years outlined um, against the two-year average. Uh, thanks very much. Um, again, a very positive uh, report, um, looking at all aspects. Uh, I mean, the broad headline figures are uh, that crime is down uh, against the two-year average. Detection rates are up against the two-year average. Um, the uh, public satisfaction rates are uh, generally being maintained uh, and some of the figures that lie behind that six thousand complaints etc are, are very very good um, the uh, it's also put it into context I took the opportunity to look at the last six year period to see what progress we've made that's showing at 310 uh, where we've seen that one to four crime groups one to four crimes which are the main types of crime violence, uh, sexual offences, dishonesty, housebreaking, vandalism, antisocial behaviour, that, that's the sort of things that really affect the public. They've fallen by 32.2% uh, over that period, which is very good. Compared that against the Scottish average, it was 19% for that same period. Um, also, where crimes have been committed, uh, as I say, our main priority is always to prevent crime. But where they have been committed, uh, it's important to look at our detection rates, and for those group one to four crimes over that period, our detection rates have uh, risen to, uh, by, sorry, 12.3%, uh, which I think we're currently running around about 59.7%. Look, looking at the post bills that will be coming in, uh, coming in next week. Uh, and that's against uh, an overall uh, Scottish increase of 2.9% in the same period. Um, the number of persons killed or injured in our roads, uh, it's very much on par with the Scottish trend there. Um, and I think the figures generally are down by about a third for that, that same sort of period. Um, and again, treble nine calls being answered, uh, our performance has risen by 3% during that, that period also. Um, I reported um, uh, at the previous PFRC meeting generally about user satisfaction, and that's an area that we targeted, particularly on, on feedback to victims of crime. Um, and that was an area where we'd seen significant improvement. Um, our officers were actually doing the work, but it was just about the communication and going back to the public. So I'm very, very pleased to see that that has improved uh, significantly. Um, I won't go into any uh, further detail on that, but uh, there's a chart etc. there for you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, questions? Councillor Nicholls. Yeah, just a it, 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 it's just on crimes of indecency or, 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 or I read nationally and I've had a lot of concerns for people over uh, internet safety uh, and nationally that has increased. Uh, have you found that trend in this authority uh, coming to you or because they feel that adults are being trained in this now because their, their children are at great risk. Uh, have you found a trend in, in this authority of that type of uh, offence? Uh, generally speaking, yes. Um, there's a, a greater prevalence of 
internet crime and youngsters being groomed or adults themselves accessing um, criminal images. It's not just youngsters. We've had a few high profile cases in that respect. They have absorbed a great deal of resources, particularly uh, the ones where you see computers etc where searches are being made at the very important areas. It's one where we continually um, in terms of our education input to children try and ensure that they are as aware as possible about the whole risk being in there and also uh, try and continually to work on at the adults so that they understand what's coming up. The latter is one where uh, we'll probably struggle a bit um, and, and it is a challenging area. Councillor Yen. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to welcome this report. The question I would like to ask the Chair's report is just out of curiosity. Many public members are asking me, do I know the, the Logan um, Street police station is existing? Are they working? Yes, they are. Um, it, it's, it's one of the resources that is particularly important to us. It's actually owned by the council, uh, but we operate it. And uh, I think it's particularly important for the, the general s safety in the, the town. I know that Carlisle, for example, were speaking about breaking down their system or not operating it. Um, I think that, that would be a very investigative step. And, uh, there's much to, to, to support our officers on the ground, but also to raise the public safety. Thank you very much. Councillor Rogerson. The number of 99 calls, non amendment calls. We've got this new number now. I just wondered that, you know, uh, as far as I take it the same thing it goes in, but has it had an effect, the new number, uh, whether it's too early to tell, I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's essentially almost too early to tell because uh, we are just over four weeks into it. Um, and uh, in terms of the monitoring, we can see the, the usage starting to increase, uh, but in some ways there hasn't been a massive uh, campaign to roll out yet. Uh, we are very much sure that it's able to cope and build up. Um, and the whole picture seems to suggest that it is working well as I, uh, as I understand. Essentially, when our operators answer the call, uh, they themselves don't know whether it's an 0845 or a 101 or a shared system for them personally. Uh, it seems to be working well. Different level of, of uptake throughout the country, uh, but I, I think that's more to do with the uh, population uh, coverage. Councillor Nicol, then Councillor Smith. Yeah, thanks, convener. Um, yeah, I mean, crime's down, very good thing, but at the start of this recession, there was a great fear that crime would rise, that people would be facing harder times and revert to crime to try and balance their books. Um, have you found anything connected to this? I mean, just why is the crime down, apart from the very good detection rate? Um, and, and the hard work of your, your officers. Um, are you surprised that it went down to such an extent? I mean, even the number of calls that have been received there, calls that have been called less, no emergency calls. I mean, all, everything's going down the way it is. I'm quite surprised it's at such an extent. Um, it's a very good question. Um, and one of the things I would say is that it's probably as a, a result of a, a whole range of issues. I think one of the most important things in this area is our parks and rec system, um, which I believe has started to, to deliver quite a lot. I think there's an awful lot more can be done through it. Uh, but uh, if you just look at some of the crime issues, uh, I was speaking to officer of youth justice this morning. Our youth justice figures compared to elsewhere in the country are quite outstanding. That means that the, the work that uh, essentially led to the part of the crisis in terms of working with judges and uh, other elements of social work is, is really effective. It's keeping youngsters out of crime and uh, not letting them get into the formal system, but dealing with them more appropriately. And that's with all the range of uh, organisations working together, seeing the early signs and us starting to see a transformation that I mentioned to you, cut across and not have to go up and down the tree and effectively force them that is working really well. 
um, as I say, I think the storm will come from it. But the other things, and the reason I'm probably more up than the figures is that I chaired the meeting yesterday, the final meeting, and caused us to reflect a bit. And we particularly looked at the number of youngsters in terms of the reoffending category. You know, those that were up until about 18, and then they were up until about 24. And quite clearly, it was dropping off very, very significantly, which tells us that it was working well. That's just one example, and I think, but it's a good example to say that a lot of our partnership uh, work is, is uh, doing very, very well. Um, and I think it is also just down to the, the whole focus on prevention. I said at the very start of my performance, input prevention, preventing crime is the most important thing. Yeah, detecting crime is important, but actually the most important thing is to try and stop people becoming victims. I think they'll become much, much more connected uh, than they've ever been in, in dealing uh, with this. And that, uh, the, the community themselves have a lot to take credit for because they take uh, a fair amount of pride and responsibility in their area. Uh, and that actually works well to, to um, prevent crime or particularly where we've seen their incidents have occurred. Um, and we've seen a, a, a Facebook page where you can almost see messages tripping across it with people saying, you know, this is happening, look out, you know, or there's a, a strange group of neighbours out in that area. And it was interesting, there was, um, I can speak about this because they weren't actual criminals, um, but there was uh, a couple of Irish traders um, over in the, uh, the uh, west side of our area uh, selling tools, um, and uh, it was suspected by those that were engaging with that perhaps they were up to criminal activity. It was amazing to see almost like a, a fire lighter tracking across the area um, where farmers were either through Facebook or, or Farm Watch notifying each other and keeping us informed so that we could get ahead of them and actually check them out. That, that's just one example, but that I think it's a great example to say there's a great deal of activity and this is why we find that it's, um, uh, we've had such a significant decrease in crime. Yes, crime is decreasing elsewhere, but not at the level that we would have liked to see. Christy. I just come back, Chair. Uh, yeah, I mean, totally agree. Certainly in the ward that I represent, the, the communication between the officer service department and the community is excellent. The two community officers are doing tremendous work in WPR High School with the young ones that are in there regularly, talking to them, and that's been a great, great success. And you can see the results of that. There are some communities out there who would like to put in CCTV and funding seems to be the big problem, finding funding to put in CCTV. I'm thinking of Whitthorn in particular and, and Newton Stewart badly needs an upgrade. Um, and I'm just wondering in the future, I mean, how do we tap, how can they tap into proceeds of crime or, or the Your Slush Fund or CCTV? That's what my slush fund is, the, the, the council fund. Um, CCTV is always a difficult area, particularly issue, particularly in remote areas, and, and being able to get it in is, is up. But, and sometimes the best option for some of these remote villages is, uh, you know, to use mobile systems, um, you know, so that you can get into an area fairly discreetly for a short while um, and have the effect of it uh, without necessarily putting in uh, what was often quite expensive. Uh, infrastructure to support the system. So it's, it's necessarily looking at a whole range of ways. I know, um, I think Colin Doran uh, from ourselves, one of the stars, is, is working with the council currently um, and, and examining a lot of the uh, policies and so on. It, it's a very useful tool, but it, it's very expensive to, 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 to get the infrastructure in. And sometimes um, short term mobile systems. Alcohol and Partnership uh, put some funding into the Alcohol and Drugs Fund to set up mobile systems to help with the youth event, youth beach, um, and that sort of area to help with the contribute to the weekend and the whole event and keep it smooth and so on. So maybe mobile systems are one way. Mr. Sam? Oh, you'll, get funny, you'll get money for your wind farm. Uh, Quite a lot of communities have been using that, but uh, just to agree with you, I mean, in my local uh, area, uh, antisocial behaviour, I believe, is still down at 
and I do contribute a lot of that to the Bobby on the Beat. Uh, uh, we've got a base now for our uh, community cop, and he uh, goes round about, and a lot of the antisocial behaviour was going to six and seven o'clock at night, they went to someone to carry on while it was dark. Uh, it's nipped a lot of that in the bud. Uh, the police car goes down by, and nobody takes any notice. You get a couple of policemen walking down by, the, and you see the curtain switching. It does make a difference when they're evident on the street. And I know, and I know you've always supported that, but uh, <clears throat> just it was uh, it was just on the the 101. I've used it about five or six times now, because uh, in Con 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 folk don't phone the police. They phone me to phone the police. Because I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's it's a brilliant system, and I, I think just the slow update and the usage is still a lot of people don't recognise it's it's out there. But once you use it for the first time, I think they'll realise how how easy it is, and you you're straight through. So I think it will be a success. It's funny how we find things out. I was talking to the lights officer, street lights, on a conversation with some new columns, you know, that after the LEDs and the, uh, the other kind, I can't remember what the name is, the technical name. So there's uh, quite a suite being done in Nannan in some of the higher areas. And I won't mention the streets. <laughs> and he said, and I said, well, that's good, because um, I know the police uh, used to have uh, engineering out crime type local things, you know, which is an officer who'd come along and advise uh, RSLs and that. Well, I had this conversation, he says, oh, I was talking to the police, they're wanting to put up a uh, mobile CCTV, uh, you know, temporary one. Uh, I remember Sean Marshall and I raised this many years ago, because they did it in Carlisle and certain uh, estates. And we said, well, why don't we fund it to the committee, actually, not, not to this committee. Uh, and yeah, we'll take that on board, but it never happened. So I'm really pleased, it's funny how we find things out as a, as a councillor that uh, the police are keen on this. So the lamp standards and the new light will help because they've dipped for the, the, um, the, uh, the old um, sodium, is it sodium? The yellow light, can't tell red from black or whatever, with the LEDs and the other, what's the other lights called, Remy Anyway, um, so uh, that'll be really good. I mean, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll get to the point I was trying to make to you. Um, if this helps, even they'll have them reduced crime, but there's hot spots in everybody's community. Um, that would be brilliant. Now, uh, I don't know how quick that's going to get rolled out because the lights are going in the start of the new financial year. I imagine the police would want to then start. They're very discreet now. Have you seen the size of these cameras now? It's hardly a bit you hardly notice them. Anyway, thanks, Jeff. Since it's the last meeting, I've wanted to get a last a wee bit, but that was all. Thanks. Thanks for that, Councillor Ogilvie. Um, did. Put a whole load of them to up and kill a home, and everybody's complaining that the burglars are not can run away and hide now because there's so many blind spots with them. So, but I have had a few complaints about them, so I don't know how successful they've been. Thanks for that feedback there. Um, uh, just a quick question on the you mentioned the Facebook page yeah. and how, how, how effective that's been in highlighting things. I noticed that they is that going to change to the national Facebook? page and yep. do we keep the existing one for local PCBs or how are you able to advise on how that's going to work? Um, I'll pass the game in a minute but I, as I understand it, it's going to a national Facebook page not just a local one that is not what we were keen to do because I think we've got 13, 13 or 14 thousand followers um, but it is a very very useful tool uh, for us great way but it's, it is occasionally abused but very rarely um, and the, the bulk of users are actually first page themselves so um, it's been a very very useful tool for us to keep people updated um, and to respond to issues very quickly that are uh, that some of my colleagues have concerns and addressed them uh, I don't know do you want to say anything else there Pat? No I mean we are merging into a national Facebook but understand there'll be functionality within that that will allow us to uh, stream information specific to different areas now I don't quite understand how that works but I'm told that that's being uh, developed and will be in play. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay. 
Um, so if we go to the recommendations then, are we happy to, are we happy that we've scrutinized the figures enough and that, uh, and we're, we're able to note that report? Thank you. Item number 11 is the interim equality and diversity strategy for 2013-16. Members will be aware that uh, our last uh, uh, action plan on diversity came to an end at the end of last year and was signed off by this committee in November uh, because of changes to quality legislation and the kind of natural expiry of our previous uh, document. Uh, this has been produced as an interim paper just to take us through into the new service. Uh, it is only a paper for noting. It was simply uh, for your information at this time, but it lays out uh, some of the the, the actions that we wish to take as a force uh, and ultimately as a division under the new Police Scotland. Uh, it does look at uh, a, a number of different actions and three different outcomes which are based around about people having confidence to engage with us as an organisation, uh, uh, people uh, being able to live their lives free from crime, which we hope anyway, and uh, also concentrates on, on ourselves as being a, a, a kind of positive and healthy workplace for people to come and work within. Uh, to the police in Galloway, and within the action plan, there's a list of the, the evidence behind these outcomes, the, the outputs that we seek to achieve, and also the activities uh, that uh, we wish to deliver during that time. Uh, as I say, it is mer merely a report for noting, but it was one that we said we'd bring to you at uh, the November meeting when you signed our last uh, uh, strategy off. Any questions? Councillor Ogilvy? It's basically to engage and, and take into account the multicultural society. You know, there's quite a big Polish community. I just wonder if there's any Polish police person or Asians or others, you know, that reflects the community as it is now. Uh, or is it all Scottish? Dare I say that? I don't mean that in any derogatory way. I'm just curious if, um, as in the quality of the trying to encourage people to become either police officers or work for the police service. Uh, does that happen? It is an issue for us and many other employers in Dublis and Galloway. I mean, our uh, ethnic profile within Dublis and Galloway is less than half, uh, one, half of 1% of our population uh, are from a different background to white British, as it were. Uh, and our workforce does reflect that, but it's also something that we need to improve. Uh, we do, uh, under the legislation, we are required to report on our uh, ethnic mix within the, the police service, uh, and, and that is done and published. But, uh, I can't quite remember off the top of my head, but uh, uh, it does reflect the, the percentage of the population that we have. Are we happy to note the adoption of this interim report? Item 12 is the staff transfer agreement. Um, I think if uh, maybe let Derek take that. Convener, it's simply for homologation and process support for this committee. I can appreciate that work had to be done. That was clearly done under standing order 22 by the director, executive, in consultation with the convener. And really, I can only recommend that we ignore that. Are we happy to uh, acknowledge and go with the recommendations? Oh, yeah, of course, on we go. Um, we saw the, uh, the scheme that the government brought in, you know, for the enhanced severance term. That was very generous at the time. I just wondered how many people availed themselves of that. I mean, that's quite a healthy number that's transferred. But uh, a couple of months ago, we saw the scheme. Um, I just wanted to, you know, because to me, it looked very generous compared to the, what was there anyway. But was there a big uptake, that's the Sorry, can be I'm not personally aware of that. Is that where the Chief Constable is? Um, can I say from our own organisation, um, there were 84 people noted an interest in the uh, uh, term. Uh, we put forward um, seven of those. This is simply 
uh, for those that would have gone by Suffolk the 1st of March, um, that was my point, that you could actually say that you've got the same thing as Suffolk the 1st of March. And I used to go at that time and I used to say that the same structure was the same. And uh, of those seven, only three have been uh, approved uh, go through the SPA arrangement. Um, and so that's 20 past one today. simply say that from a council point of view, from a policing point of view, we've done everything uh, and we can be tiny for this. Really disappointed that the staff uh, are being treated uh, the way things are being treated at the moment. And so that was my concern. As I say, we've got three staff members on Friday. I would think that fairly quickly thereafter, um, the uh, movement, not necessarily all of the same, but quite a sense of movement, a structure will be a structure will be in place. With that, we're happy to go with the recommendation. <coughs> well, item 13, I guess, is any other consent business. Uh, <coughs> I'm not really sure what to do in this situation because it's the first time I've been involved in a committee that technically won't exist anymore. Um, <coughs> so, uh, uh, I know that um, Hamish has got something he'd like to say, uh, but I think firstly, um, um, through the members, uh, I'm sure all the members would like to say something somehow, so um, I think this is our opportunity as a one-off. Um, but I would like to say I think we've been blessed by the calibre of uh, officers, um, particularly those who are here today and all, all the teams working under them, um, especially to deliver <coughs> the performance over the last few years. Um, which is made the Mrs. Gallery and keeps it as good as it is. Um, and it's very hard to find the words to say, but I'm sure the members around this room will be able to add to that. Um, I'll just ask uh, Ian if he had something to add. I think the only thing I could really say is that Ronnie and I managed to keep it going for six years. In ten months, we've managed to get built for a national <laughs> service. <laughs> but <laughs> but, uh, but uh, other, other than that, I'd just like to thank the foundation for keeping us keep on fire for this year, and that's what we're doing. Certainly, we're doing a fine job. And it's been a pleasure to work with you and to be able to get this done. Right, Hamish. Uh, thanks, Convener. I did ask the convener to allow me this opportunity to say a few words on behalf of uh, the management team of the service, but also the staff of Dumfriesian Gallery Fire Rescue Service. Uh, firstly, we'd like to thank the Fire Authority and the members past and present of the DFRC for the support they have afforded the service over the last 38 years. Under their and your direction and scrutiny, the service has developed into a highly performing organisation that is well-trained, well-equipped, and has the infrastructure that is second to none. Throughout its existence, it has maintained a focus on firefighting and community safety and has always invested heavily in both time and money to ensure this. If you may, uh, I'd like to just give you some of the most recent indicators of how well the organization is performing and some of the headlines that, something along what, what Pat said earlier on, over the last five years, reduced we have reduced accidental fires in GMG by 29%. Reduced deliberate fires by 47%. The most important one, and I think it's, it's about the partnership working, is that small fires, which are normally down to antisocial behaviour, are down 64%. There's a 42% drop in the number of road, tri road traffic collisions attended. 27% drop in the number of emergency calls received. The incidents attended down by 31%, and in 98.97% of all cases, our crews have turned out first time to an incident, which is an exceptional figure and is really down to the scale. So I think you can tell from that, and the partnership working that we've done, how well we have all worked together. So this has been very much a team effort, uh, and has included the collective efforts of this committee, our many partners, all members of staff, and I want to recognise them firefighters, fire control staff, to operational response responsibilities, to the support staff to provide the back office functions without the service would not be able to operate without those. 
Uh, I know you are proud of it, uh, as we are too. So thank you for that. On a personal note, uh, it would be remiss of me not to thank you as a committee uh, for having the confidence to appoint me as the interim head of service in August of last year. It's been an honour, if not somewhat challenging at times, uh, particularly given that uh, we're taking the service through in the transition into the shortly fire medical service. Um, but I'd also like to uh, finish by thanking you all as individuals for the support that you've afforded me in a whole host of arenas over the past 12 months or so, and actually as best positioned to move you moving forward in the steps. Thank you. Yeah, if I could just uh, say very briefly, um, we've had all the performance figures, we've all had all the public satisfaction, we've had the revenue reports, etc. They're all very good. Um, uh, but probably one of the things we don't always focus on is the engagement that we have, particularly with the public staff. And it is very good. We should all remember the best value report we had, which in some ways that's bureaucracy and what have you. But the message that we can get through, I think, is actually very, very, very well. Uh, we're not in each other's pockets. Uh, there is an appropriate level of challenge, but with challenge there also comes support. And that's certainly, in my view, what has what has been very, very evident in terms of the public service. It's been extremely well supported in terms of the the budget, um, you know, the revenue and capital, uh, but also just the general support of council and the board. Um, the way the area committee structure works, I think, suits us very, very well. And with the proper engagement at local level, something that was expected uh, and often not delivered. Um, that brings the result that has been really good and positive. So I, I thank every one of you for, for your support, and particularly Ian uh, for uh, putting up with me as I knew two constables uh, when I came down here. And we were both new uh, to the role in some respects back in 2010. Uh, I think we all have worked very well. I never missed the opportunity to, uh, for a wee bit of a commercial. Um, we, uh, one of the things I'm very, very proud of, uh, when I spoke to my staff uh, back about August, September last year, so the force is 65 years old in, in February 2013. Uh, is there something you would like to do to mark uh, the end of the service? Um, thankfully, they all said yes. Um, and uh, for me, it's an opportunity to say, well, look, yes, we're moving into a new organization. And, and yes, there's, there's a bit of angst about it, but actually, if you celebrate your success, you acknowledge the performance, it's a great platform for going forward. Uh, so we've done a range of things with our church service and, and lunch for retired officers and, and uh, uh, some councillors were, were at that. Um, we also had a function over in Tanwar at the weekend where uh, our own staff and retired officers were involved, which was very good. We've done the book um, and uh, so we've done the book. A small team of officers have done the book. Tired officers now, um, and it just came out at the start of the week there. I think it's what we hope for the end of the year as well. The other thing, you know, when I speak about revenue budgets and all the rest of it, it's self financing. Um, and lot, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying, it's self financing. <laughs> ten, ten, pound, 10 pounds a shot, hard book, hard back book. But, but what it does do is it reflects on the history, some of the challenges. Uh, and the many achievements in the force since 1948. And I think it's an important one just to actually mark uh, the history. We've sold, sold over 700 copies already. Uh, it's a limited edition up to 1,000 copies. Uh, very good, very encouraging. Uh, additionally, at the weekend, we have a final celebration of the Lord, Lord Advocate. Um, and um, I thought it would be nice to be able to invite all of you. Unfortunately, um, what we've been able to do ever is um, invite um, chairs and passengers uh, to have a reasonably well covered back conference in the five. We also have all former chief constables, which we did have on the weekend event, uh, from 1965 onwards coming on to the uh, General Chatter, including Alan Campbell. Uh, unfortunately, Roy Cameron, who used to be chief constable uh, here, uh, took in well over the weekend there, so he's unable to come down, but uh, uh, it's quite a good record to see. Which, for me, really shows how, how proud many people are of uh, that really achievement of the force itself. What I'd also like to say is 
very good players at every country. And the new management team who are taking over, they're all people at local level who are known to you. They all know how the, the area works. They are all committed to the country of Scotland. That's what's been so important. Thank you very much for your support. Yeah, just over at start. When I first got elected in '87, um, it was the Police Fire and Public Protection Committee, uh, and I've been on the committee and its successor since then. Um, Willie Ray, David Strang, uh, Ian, oh, actually 18 months chair. But uh, one of the last jobs before the election was to uh, pick a new chief constable, and I think we made the right decision. But uh, it's. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've worked with uh, Willie Ray, David Strang, and uh, Pat over the years. Uh, I think uh, David Wynn and whoever it was before that, I can't even know. But, uh, so it's, it's been very, uh, you're right, I mean, um, it's good to have that. I've always been, um, as a senior union official, you get close to managers, but you've got a responsibility. It's the same with if you're a chair or there's a difference. You can't get involved in operations, but there's always that professional distance. You can work together and be partners and, and share their common goals. But at the end of the day, you've got different roles to play. And, and that's been evident. I don't think anybody's gone native. Uh, Ian, because he's a former policeman, but <laughs> and you didn't know you were getting this job. you know. So, uh, but you've, you've done it well, uh, Chair. I've enjoyed my time, and, and I'm sure going forward, um, what we've heard from Derek and, and what, what's been proposed by the, the councillors, the political side, is that we, we're looking for something similar to go forward. And uh, I'm quite confident with Kate and, and all the officers that we do know, and, and the fire service with Neville and others, that we should get a similar uh, relationship and do our job, both our jobs, or all our jobs, I should say, in the professional way we've done it before. And I personally will be putting my name forward for the successor committee. Because uh, I do enjoy that sort of work, and I'm sure I don't know about others, but uh, just the continuity and experience, you know, we just can't throw everything out. We'll be the open back one. So it's an end of an era for us all. I mean, that's personally, and I'm getting recorded here. I was more shocked than anybody when the Labour Party said they were going to go for a single police force, man, because it was never in our manifesto until about a fortnight before the, the election. Um, but however, it doesn't matter what happens. Government today has got a big majority, and that's their policy. So here we are. Can't beat ourselves up anymore about it. So I just wish everybody well in the future, and us as well, obviously. So thanks very much, everyone. I'm not as long as him. No, just six years ago, a new, uh, a new councillor coming into this uh, committee, and it was a wee bit daunting for me uh, to start. And I'm sure the new members last year felt the same. It was the nearest I'd ever been to a policeman without having a blanket over my head. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm sure we all agree with, uh, for, for all my stupid questions, they were always answered. And were, I've always been treated with great respect. Uh, there's somebody that was a great believer in the children's panel for a long time. Dumfries and Galloway had the best children's panel than anywhere else in Scotland, and I didn't see any need for any change. And I feel exactly the same with the, the police, fire, uh, and, and rescue people in, in our area. You've just got to look at the uh, what we've read today, uh, how successful they've been, and you wonder do we need to change? And hopefully, uh, the good uh, the good work that's been done in the past can keep going in the new single force. Uh, I just like to thank everybody involved for the respect and that that they've accorded me over the last few years. And uh, the other committees that I've been in, I think this is the one that's given me most satisfaction because you can always see that something's happened, especially in this one. So thanks for everybody's work. Thank you, Chair. Uh, in a way, I'd, I'd like to, to echo the, the comments that have been already said. Um, as a new member to the Council as well as to this committee, uh, as Councillor Syme said, I've really enjoyed working on this committee. Um, uh, I thank the, the lead officers here for accepting me on my own merits as a new member. Uh, 
There is obviously a lot of experience on this committee from the past, but uh, that has never been put to me uh, from, from, the, from the likes of the Chief Constable uh, or his staff and with Hamish and his staff. Uh, they've accepted me as being a new councillor and quite happily and willing to work with me right the way through. Um, so I, I thank you for that. Um, I really enjoyed this committee because um, it's not politicised. Well, I think we're all here for, um, to work towards the safety and well-being of the people of Dumfries and Galloway. Uh, and I think that's quite obvious in this committee and the services, of course, um, that is, 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 de is detriment to them. Um, so from that behalf, uh, I, I, I've really enjoyed working on the committee. I've enjoyed working with the people here um, from all services and all members of staff involved in the services. Um, I have confidence, as the Chief Constable has said, with the, the team that has taken over it and taken us into the new service um, with Neville and Kate. Um, I'm quite sure that they will work their hardest to make sure that Dumfries and Galloway is as well represented and looked after as it has been in the past. Uh, and I feel that probably the, the officers and staff that will still be left working through the single forces, I expect will still feel that they're working for Dumfries and Galloway. So, thank you. Thank you, Chair. I am that the council has got quite good. It's something I've always enjoyed. The one thing I've never been able to get used to is um, public work, because I was a special for years. I was a female custody officer, and the only thing I did was come to staff. And I still kind of get used to that, and it still fits the nerves of the museum. Which is really strange, but it's Hamish. I, I really wish him all the best. He was very good at what he's doing for what I've seen. I'm sure he does. But <coughs> I'm not sure if that was happening to you. Are you retiring now? I'm not sure if that's what you're going to say. I retire on 2nd October. Meantime, <laughs> so I was very keen to see it completed in time. Um, but uh, and that's an important element as well. I mean, I joke about Dan Cuddles, but it's important for me to move out of Hedgeworth and move to Good luck with your retirement. Do take care. Do you want in before me? Very briefly. I don't agree with the new police force, but we are where we are. I've never agreed with it in the first place. I thought the police gallery was tremendous. Everything was coterminous, but this is brave new world we're in. Tomorrow's the first day of the rest of our lives. And I have to get on with it. To Pat, to Hamish, thank you for all the good work you've done. It's been a pleasure working with you. And to Neville and Lorna, is it? Kate. Why did I get Lorna on my head? To Neville and to Kate, I wish them all success. I hope we can continue the good working relationship. I don't think it's a step forward, but it's the way we're going. Thank you both very much for all your hard work and every success for the future. Yeah, um, I, when I joined the council, I wasn't on the police and fire committee. Um, I met Gary Small one day in Stranraer, and he said, Graham, no, no, not at that point, no. He says, uh, but since then, <laughs> he says, uh, Graham, there's nobody on this police and fire west of Castle Douglas. So I had a quick word with the leader of the council and uh, much to my relief, I got off social work and he took it on. So it was, it was a good move as far as I was concerned. I don't know about him. <laughs> and uh, from then on, I've thoroughly enjoyed being on the committee. Um, Can I just remind you this is being recorded? Yes. Can, haven't said anything wrong yet, have I? <laughs> um, the figures have been improving all the time from both services. Um, our, our detection rates, our crime rates, our fires, and all, everything else has been improving virtually all the time so that is good good news um, our equipment in both services 
is second to none. Uh, police vehicles, fire vehicles, everything seems to be in very good condition. So we're handing over to the single police force. I'm quite sure a lot of other forces would be jealous of what we've got. And not just the fire engines and stuff like that, but built this new thing out the road here that Hamish's mechanical set, which I see is getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> Devil's mechanical set now, aye. Eh? Um, so I'm, I'm a wee bit disappointed in the, the treatment that, that the staff have received um, with the new forces coming into play, that they haven't had more um, sort of assurance as to where they're going and, and been put out of their, their, their anxieties as time has gone on. That will, no doubt, get sorted out. But it, it's, it's a stressful time for these people, and, and it's wrong that, that they should have been put through a, 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 time, of, a, a time of stress. Um, I've worked with officers in both both services. Some of the police officers my first name terms with. Um, mostly they drive cars with stripes on the side or square things. And some of them don't have even square things on the side. And they're just burning the car. Oh, very much so. <laughs> I get out and bow. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, at, at all levels, I've had a tremendous relationship with both services and, and I've really enjoyed it. The future, well, personally, I wasn't in favour of either service going to a single force, but that's beside the point. Uh, it's change, we've got to embrace change, we've got to move on. We are going where we're going, and I wish all the service, both services, all the best in the future. And I will certainly be able, like Ronnie, I'll be putting my name forward for the new committee, whatever the committee's called, because I thoroughly enjoy this committee. Thanks very much to both services for all the help and the good work you've done in the past. I had kind of thought that we maybe weren't going around everybody, but um, yeah, I, I don't really do big speeches anymore, so I'm kind of out of practice. Um, I think all that I'll say is that I wish uh, everybody who is currently involved with uh, and will continue to be involved with uh, both the police service and fire and rescue service um, the very best in the future. Um, and I wish that you uh, neither of them was present. Um, I think that all serve the best in the future and um, have a great deal of confidence in their ability to deliver the service and the best in the future. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I've been asked to ask if we're having tea and buns after this. Sorry, Graham. The answer's no. I would also like to echo the sentiments of uh, what I've heard so far, and I'll totally echo Councillor Foster's. And I, I don't know if this is the, the way the way forward is the right way. I thought there was nothing. If it wasn't broken, why did we have to fix it? What we had was superb. Um, I've known Hamish for a great number of years, more more years than uh, I care to remember. And I'm pleased that Hamish is going to move on and, and do something else. Uh, he'll be a loss to this area, but I'm sure he'll be the loss to this area will be a credit to somewhere else. And uh, for for Pat, well, when Pat first came, I was his neighbour, but it didn't stay long across the road. Please, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't long in moving. But the uh, uh, same as everyone else, I, I think it's been a superb committee. I think that the standard of officers that we have in both forces, you know, I don't think he can get better anywhere. And I hope that uh, the new forces that come in realize that the new chief constable and senior fire officer realize just that we are the best in this area. And let's hope that they never forget that. Good luck to everyone who's still here or are going. Just say a wee word there, but the, uh, I know all the officers and all the lasses and a lot of hard work, but we remember Carl Henschel as well for other really Absolutely. hard work he did in the, the Pathfinder stuff. I think there's, there's probably no end to the amount of uh, 
recommendations that you make, <coughs> especially to, <coughs> to the officers that we have before us. To, uh, I think the committee as a whole has pretty much expressed in a number of different ways their own feelings and, and the overall spirit of the organisation. Good, but a week on Monday, we're into the new, we're into the new structure. We'll look for other things, and hopefully we can continue to engage as successfully as we have done for the past twenty-two. Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks for your patience.